morning and welcome to Judaism Today. Have you ever had an issue with a friend or a colleague, a neighbor, that you sort of had to rebuke them, but you were not so sure how to say it? You know, you wanted to be sensitive and appropriate. You needed them to get the message, but you sort of had to dance around the topic. You didn't want to come out flatly and say it to their face just because it would hurt them, it would crush them, it would create a firestorm. The way we rebuke people, the way we give people musr, the way we share feedback with people, has to be done with the utmost sensitivity. I want to share with you a beautiful insight from some of the svarim in this week's parsha. The Torah opens with Moshe's final speech to the Jewish people. The book of Tvarim, Moshe here, the Jews are about to enter the land of Israel. Moshe is about to pass away. And he's giving the new generation, the next generation, their charge, their mandate, their mission to enter the land of Israel. And in the opening of the Parsha, Moshe rebukes them. But what's fascinating is that he doesn't rebuke them overtly. He rebukes them subtly. In fact, if you would read the Torah at its face, you wouldn't notice rebuke at all. All the Torah says is that Moshe mentions specific places. Lavan, Chatzeros, Dizahav, he reminds the Jewish people of places they had been in the desert. But Rashi comments and explains, like for example, Di Zahab really means Dai Zahab, which means too much gold. They had too much gold. What happened with too much gold? They made the golden calf. And that really it wasn't that it was a place, but it was a reference to their behavior, where they acted wrongly because they had too much gold and they made the golden calf. Say the Svarim, that this is one of the incredible ways to give rebuke. While sometimes it is necessary to have an open, overt clearing of the air, sometimes you want to allude to something, and this way people will get the message. They'll understand it on its own. And they explain as follows, because when you just say something flatly, straightly to someone, they are not processing themselves. You're saying it, you're, opposi- you're the opponent, you're being oppositional, and they're going to be oppositional. But when you allude to something, and then they process it on their own, It causes a moment of reflection and internalization and consideration that perhaps didn't exist otherwise. And that is an approach to giving review. It's not the approach. There are a lot of different ways. Every circumstance is different. But if we can get people to reflect, recognize, consider, contemplate, then we've learned the lesson from this week's Parsha in how to communicate sensitively, but importantly, our neighbor. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Judaism Today. If you did, please make sure to follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or check into our podcast, wherever podcasts are listened to. And we look forward to hearing from you more.